Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are looking at software update 2021.36.5.8 in our Tesla Model 3 performance. As you can see here, mobile app improvements. You can now adjust charge current, schedule departure or schedule charging at your car's current location from the Tesla app. This functionality requires mobile app version 4.1.0. I've already done a video on this in the 2021.36 release, so make sure you check out that video. But today in our Tesla Model 3, we are going for an autopilot test drive. We've got the full self-driving package here in Australia, which enables me to use Navigate on autopilot as well as automatic lane change. So we'll be using that on this drive. If you've just got the basic autopilot with your car, you won't have those features. We're about to also use the Broadway Supercharger, which is one of the closest superchargers to me. And I do recommend if you're using a supercharger to always use it in conjunction with the car's navigation like this. So in the map screen, you want to press the supercharger icon, which is this one down here. And we're going to use the supercharger at Broadway like that. And that'll bring us across the Harbour Bridge, which is quite a nice drive and then we'll use the supercharger. And that way you also precondition the battery for fast charging as well. Uh, and that actually makes the supercharging experience a lot quicker. We've only got 76% state of charge. Uh, I will be topping up to 100% today just because we don't have a driveway for the next couple of weeks. It is under construction. Let's do it. Push that to get going. And as I said, we've got Navigate on autopilot. In blue, you'll see when that activates. And uh, when you've got preconditioning battery for fast charging, you can feel the car, it sounds different. Like this very high pitched whir. Um, something else happens to the battery while it's uh, preconditioning. I assume it's, it's heating or it's uh, at a temperature where it's optimum for DC fast charging or supercharging. Something else that's nice with a Tesla Model 3 is the performance or the acceleration. And uh, as you can see, this is quite a busy junction onto a main road. And with the acceleration, you can actually get out of spots like this a lot quicker, like that. And you're onto a main road, which is quite nice. All right, let's activate autopilot, which is a double tap with the right stalk like that. You can use it on um, roads that uh, when you're driving, you get this gray steering wheel symbol like that. So let's activate it now. So autopilot is essentially traffic aware cruise control with um, auto steer. Now I'm in the left lane of this road, which is uh, quite bumpy. So I apologize, it might be a bit shaky for this part of the drive. If you want to match the speed limit, by the way, you just, um, when the speed changes like that to 80, you just want to hang on to the right stalk like that and then it matches so I, see I counted one two in my head and that matches the uh, posted speed sign like that so I apologize for the bumpy road uh, it uh, it's the lane that the buses use so they do tend to make some potholes I'll just show you uh, auto lane change in a second that way we can get out of this lane as well there's an opportunity that arises. Now do keep in mind autopilot at this stage, even FSD package is not full self-driving. It's uh, nowhere near autonomous. You've always got to keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheels, wheel, I should say. And they should help yourself a very safe and comfortable journey. I'll put the cameras on for you guys so you can see what's happening around us. There you go. Got the two, uh, Repeaters there and the rear camera giving us a nice view around the car. This stage, um, uh, autopilot does not recognize uh, potholes or any other sort of major obstructions. Like there was some a massive branch on the side of the road there. So I just, when that happens, I just, I'm very careful and very, have a very low tolerance to uh, take over. So again, just to match the speed limit, one, two down on the right stalk, just halfway down and um, see it matches the speed sign quite nicely there. Okay, so there's a fork in the road. Let's see what happens. I may have to take over here, guys. Yeah, so I just took over because, uh, yeah, I was just, I held the wheel quite firmly. I wanted to swerve right, so I had to take over. That's okay, so that's one disengage, no problem. 
some light rain now. If you've got light rain like this, it doesn't affect uh, autopilot vision too much. If the rain does get quite heavy, it can affect the cameras. I've seen that before. Let's see if I can change lanes to the left. No, okay. So I will do that myself. Sometimes it doesn't change lanes into a filter lane. If it's just regular uh, lane change onto another lane on the road, then yes, it's fine, but for a filter lane, you may have to take over. Okay, so now we're coming up to a smaller arterial road compared to the one I was just on. It still works if you've got that gray steering wheel icon there, so let's pop that on. And uh, with the traffic aware cruise control, you know, if cars like the one in front of me is darting in and out, it's no problem. It does uh, take that into account and it'll match the speed of the cars ahead of us quite nicely. So if you are the second or subsequent vehicle at a traffic light intersection, then the car will proceed. If you're the, f you're the first car at the traffic light, or if there's a big gap between the two sets of lights at the intersection, then you may have to confirm um, and that's uh, either with the accelerator pedal or with this right stalk again, that very versatile right stalk. And see whether we can engage again. Yes, we can. I'll wave to this Model X here. Yes, I still do the Tesla wave. Okay, I might disengage there. So there are three ways you can disengage autopilot. Do what I did, which is flick up with the right stalk. That clears it completely. You can press the brake pedal. <coughs> that also clears it completely. You can waggle the steering wheel or take over the steering wheel. That keeps cruise control on, but takes auto steer off. So it depends what situation you're in and what you want to do after you disengage. Someone said to me that the colors of um, this update or the previous update matches the color of the car better. See so yeah, how it's a bit of a deeper red. And have a look at this indicator here, that red light indicating red that's something you kind of see in the US but not in Australia we have our uh, amber lights uh, for indicators so interesting there that um, the red light is an indicator light for cars here in Australia as well which is not accurate all right let's put autopilot back on so you'll notice now that I haven't actually engaged to navigate on autopilot yet only certain roads allow navigate on autopilot and that's represented by a straight blue line. And uh, I've currently got it on Mad Max mode, which is basically the car uh, will try and get you to your destination as quickly as possible with regards to lane change. And I, do, I have it on uh, no confirmation for lane change, except for the, the slight waggle to let the car know you're still alive. I'll show you what I mean. So if you go to autopilot, see I've got it on navigate on autopilot. Um, let's just do this customized navigate on autopilot. So Mad Max mode, exit passing lane, require lane change confirmation, no, and lane change notification, both vibrate and chime when the car is changing lanes. All right, so we're about to hit the freeway. So car should just proceed straight it does good here we go so that hear that noise and the lane is now that blue line showing navigate on autopilot let me just match the speed limit to 80 yeah sometimes the indicators go off for no reason not sure why it went off then but unnecessary might just flick it off okay so it wants to lane change no problem Now this road, this is the Warringah Expressway, which goes into the city by the Sydney Harbour Bridge and Sydney Harbour Tunnel. This is arguably the busiest road in Sydney, uh, possibly one of the busiest roads in Australia. It can be really confusing for a non-local, so even for a local, um, it's, it's, it's a bit hairy. So the lanes change here and there, you've just got to really be paying attention at all times. So this is the barometer I use for um, I guess autopilot and I always have a very low threshold for taking over but let's see which lane it uses today to use the harbour bridge yep I guess this is the one I would probably use too 
So every now and then there's a warning that's uh, asking you to take over the wheel or at least waggle the wheel just a bit. And it's just very faint waggle, like it's a bit of a fine art. You don't have to like give it a big waggle, just a little fine little waggle. And that should be enough to clear that, that uh, so-called autopilot nag. Okay, so you see that sign up ahead there which says bridge on the left, that's where we want to go. Let's see what happens, whether the car also obeys that. Okay, here we go. Yep, good. good. Just gave the car a little bit of a waggle with the wheel. And this is the lane I would have used to as a human driver, so to speak. I don't know why it's slowing down, or well, very slow, to get into the slip lane. I probably would have gone a bit faster. Which follow I forgot? I've got number one follow. Oh, yep, good. Indicator left, excellent. Into the slip lane. Good. Well, let's see what happens. Does it use the left lane? There's a car behind me. So, no. Good. Playing it safe, staying in this lane. Speed limit is now 70, so let's also adjust accordingly. Nope. Now it's 80. 70 is actually correct, so actually we want to be 70. So, it's had trouble reading electronic speed signs, or the um, lit speed limits recently. That read something. <laughs> Not sure what. It must have been a speed board on the left. There's a police car behind me as well. So everyone's playing it safe today, which is nice. People tend not to speed around police cars, for obvious reasons. Alright, so we're safely in this lane, lane number five, which can be a bit hairy as well on the Sydney Harbour Bridge at this time of the day because we are uh, facing oncoming traffic. As you can see, um, the lane markings do change depending on the time of day. When... Um, oh, it wants to go back. Okay. No, no it doesn't. Yeah, so I'd, I'd prefer to be in this left lane if I'm on the bridge. Ooh. Must have seen something, that forward collision warning. But dis didn't disengage autopilot, it kept going with the blue line. Interesting. So yeah, I was just saying I wouldn't be in this right lane just because it's um, it's facing on, well, there's an oncoming traffic lane next to it, right next to it with no barrier, so I'd prefer to be this lane across uh, some sense of security. All right, let's see what happens now. So getting onto the bridge is one thing, and then getting off the bridge is also another challenge if you're not a local in Sydney. Because um, at this point then the, the roads fork off into, uh, not fork off as in like it, it diverges into many different uh, options, as you'll see very shortly. So you kind of have to make a decision quite early uh, before you get off the Harbour Bridge. So as a local, I would pick the Western Distributor exit, which is basically just going straight, and looks like this car is also doing that. Okay, it wants me to change lane. Okay, that's fine for now. That's good, because I would also do the same. I'd want to go onto the City South Dowling Harbour exit to use the uh, supercharger to charge. Now turn left onto Bay Street. Okay, so we're getting close to the Broadway shopping centre where the Tesla superchargers are present. So let's run through how to get to the chargers if you are wanting to use these Tesla superchargers. Okay, so you want to indicate right to get into these this car park here, the north car park. It's a little bit unusual, the entry, so let me just run it through with you guys. So the Tesla charges are actually just below us, like literally below us. So you actually have to just think left, like keep thinking left, and there are signs as well, but if you think left, you should be able to get to the charges pretty easily from this car park entrance. <laughs> I might scoot into this lane too. There is an entry on this side. I don't know why I'm queuing up. Um, now it's two hours free parking. So two hours free parking. 
Okay, so we want to be in this lane, right? So go down, not up like that car's doing. So go down. There used to be signs here. Let's see the Tesla charger signs are still here. Just be careful of the um, sides, the rims. Just be careful if your, if your rims, you don't want to scratch them. Gutters are quite high. There you go, Tesla charging. So just follow the signage. Think left, 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 left. And as I said, be careful of your rims. Gutters are quite high here at this place. Okay, so you want to actually go out. So way out, think left, left, left. And just follow accordingly. And it looks like you're going out the same way you came in. That's fine, that's perfect. Like I said before, it's below us. And instead of going out, don't go out just yet. There is a right lane here, so there you go. You can see your Tesla charges on the right there. So just swing the right. And yeah, you can either go that way, swing there, or you can do follow the signage on the road and just swing around to the Tesla superchargers right here. So I think etiquette dictates that we um, the urinal rules apply, so don't share charging ports. And try and pick some charges which um, no one else is using in the pairs. So we are in 2A, 2B, so let's use 2B. Reverse parking always, because the charge port's on the left. Okay, cool. All right, guys, let's go charge up. Okay, so here we are. Let's grab the CCS2 charger, which is this top one. It can be a bit of a wiggle to get out. Uh, let's press this button here. Charge pump comes up. And just literally just plug it in. Like that. Wait for a second. Want it to go green. Alright guys, so well, there we go, supercharging away. As I said before, I don't often charge to 100% just because we don't have access to our garage this week. Hence, we are topping up at the supercharger uh, because of that reason. Otherwise, uh, stay safe, take care, and uh, let me know if uh, you've seen anything on this update that I missed. Leave your comments below. Until the next video, stay safe, and as always, happy charging.